Welcome, everybody. Just typing in the chat. Hello, Elizabeth. You were the first one on chat. Nailed it today. Welcome back, everyone. Please settle on in. Very excited to bring everybody on here today. I hope everyone's doing well. I know here in Ontario, we're starting to open the doors uh, for childcare. That was a bit of a, been an up and down feeling. Um, and we're starting to get back into the swing of things. Hopefully patio season comes up within the summer. That's the dream, but you know, let us know where you're coming from. Uh, welcome back. If you're coming back for a webinar returning, if you're here for the first time, uh, super excited to have you talking a little bit more about this back to school experience. I see Texas, hello from Wisconsin, Philadelphia, hello Toronto, I see you, New Jersey, North York, Kingston, I went to school in Kingston, wild times, we won't talk about that, that's for a different time. Hello Illinois, I see you, welcome everybody. Hello, hello. Hope everyone's doing well these days. We're just going to give another minute or two here just to let everyone settle in. Um, we're just getting everybody connected up. Took us a couple extra minutes than we wanted to here in the beginning. So I want to make sure to get everybody on and settled. Hello, New York, Alberta. Hello, Virginia, Massachusetts. Wow, LA, the Ottawa area. Also went to school out that way. Went to Carleton. Beautiful city and freaking cold in the winter. Freaking cold. Brooklyn, New York. Hello. Yep. So everyone knows sunny, phenomenal day here in Toronto. Uh, I guess if you're anywhere on this part of that weather area for us. So I don't know if New York is getting similar weather. Usually we're not too far apart, but beautiful day today. If you haven't had a chance to get outside, please do. Take in some fresh air. Hopefully not raining. I saw Kenya. Occasionally we get a couple of nice folks who've been joining us here from Kenya, from India, a couple from the Philippines, I'm sure. Tanzania, hello, hello. Maryland, I see you. All right, just a minute or so here and then we will get started. Sunny in Ottawa, I know, it's just, just phenomenal. I hope everyone's doing well as we crawl back in to this beautiful back to school experience. Hello, Hollywood. Hollywood, West Hollywood, California. Shut the front door. Um, anyways, sorry, I got all caught up in the chat, guys. You guys are a lot of fun, I have to say. So yeah, we're going to be talking about the back to school experience. I know for many, many states, you know, you guys have been in the swing. You're either fully in swing of things now or, you know, some states never really closed up. Some states did have some period where they were closed up. And then, of course, you're in Ontario and across actually all of our provinces, it's been a very, very slow reopen. So um, I know BC being a little bit more fortunate than us here in Ontario with case lawing, um, then, you know, been a little bit open a little bit longer. Um, but at the end of the day, super excited to get chatting with everybody here. So let's dive in. Like I said, settle on in. If you haven't had a chance, grab yourself a glass of water. A little early for an adult beverage, but you know, or if you're working, maybe just hold off another couple hours. We're almost there. Just kidding, guys. Let's dive in though. Have a little bit of fun with what's going on. Hello, Nashville. I see you there. If you haven't met us before, I'm Rhea. I'm one of the early childhood educators here at Hi Mama. And I've been working in our we I'm working our marketing team actually, to be very, very honest, alongside my buddy here, Carmen. Carmen is our community coordinator. If you've never seen Carmen, she is usually at a conference. Hi. Carmen, guys, is the most beautiful person I work alongside with and carries a load on the back. She's going to be on chat. Say hello to her. Send her any messages, any questions that you need help with. She's here to help you as we go through. So Awesome. As usual. <laughs> and our guests today, our guests of honor here. We, we're still having some small connection issues with Wanda, but I know we're going to get her on here. But we are bringing back Angela. Super excited to have you guys both on. So when you are, when we come on here, we're going to have a little bit further conversation with both of these lovely ladies. Angela is a returning guest, everybody. Phenomenal lady that we spoke to. I'm very excited to have Wanda on in a little bit as well, who's been very active in our Slack group. 
So, and was super helpful with a couple of great things. So we wanted to bring her on and get some, some key perspective and advice from her. So she may have gotten on here. May, we're still working on it. Wanda, were you able to join up with us? We got your picture. We were having some, some connection issues earlier with some voice and everything. But we'll bring you back on for Q&A in a couple of minutes, Wanda. We can't quite hear you yet, but you're almost there. She's just been, we've been having some trouble, folks, as we take a minute. We've been able to see Wanda briefly for a couple of minutes, and then we haven't been able to hear her. But um, so far, I think we're, we've almost got her. So hopefully we're able to bring her on in. But we'll roll on in. So Wanda, when, uh, when you're Almost slide, there. She's there. Wanda, did you make it? Almost. We've had a bit of luck. Okay. Wanda, we're going to bring you on a few I minutes. I can see you. I just can't hear you. Uh-oh. She can't hear us, everybody. Hope all is well. Um, Wanda, mm -hmm. we'll have Carmen yeah. working on the back end to help you out there, my dear. This is just so you know, folks, this is what Carmen does on the tail end. She's, I shouldn't say tail. She's on the backside here. Yes. <laughs> working for our guests. So. Okay. Maybe. So we can hear Wanda, but Wanda can't hear us for a magical reason. Yes. So we'll make sure Carmen is able to right. get her on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> This was a sort of connection issues we do well. Wanda, you can't hear us or you can hear yeah. us. It's crazy. Is I know. It's wild, isn't it? Oh, we'll bring her back. So before we dive in, folks, because uh, well, let's get started and in, into the, some of the content and then into our panelists. So as per normal, um, we are going to be going to the Slack channel after for any unanswered Q&A, please feel free to join us there uh, if you'd like. Um, and as well, we are um, gonna be sending out the certificates after the um, webinar. Please stay tuned for the details. Carmen will get those all to you guys in a little bit. At the end here, we'll be giving out all the fine details, so not to fret, okay? If you get anything like chat saying it's frozen or anything like that, you can just refresh, everything will refresh. And finally, if you feel like you dropped off or anything changed, then don't worry. We record all of this. We will send it out to you tomorrow with all of the show notes and any resources. So let's dive in some of the topics that we're going to talk to today. A couple of just things we've been hearing on and off as, um, as this is happening, as people have been opening up, as well as, um, you know, points of view that we've been getting. Just a couple of tidbits and then we're going to jump in with our panelists uh, hopefully we can bring wanda on here and get her in she's been using the guidelines specifically just the cbc guidelines and following those pretty closely um and then as well talking about the reopening experience dealing with a case of covid i know uh angela dealt with that and i, I think that's a huge piece I'd like to chat a little bit further with her about being back in the center so when we bring her on we'll go into there let's dive in though talk about a little bit more about that drop off and pick up so consensus wise these have been like the top key pieces that we've been seeing for the most part a lot of centers are doing some sort of scheduled staggered pick up and drop off with mom and dad um you know whether that be out in the parking lot whether they're calling in whether it's been a scheduled time but those have been like the key things so far this way families don't congest anywhere okay and this is like something too i feel like we can see here in most of the provinces is they're recommending that you know parents not really go into the centers right now um, just to help maintain that safety zone for your staff for your children there as well as being able to um, you know keep the spread down another cool thing that we found about a couple of our customers were telling us that those for those centers that are allowed to have staff uh, sorry not staff parents go in and out they've actually kind of done something similar to what you've probably seen at the grocery store or seen in like your local shoppers or wherever, where they put, put the arrows down and so you can only go in that direction. Although I won't lie, I'm not the best at following the arrows. I do my best, but I'm not my best at it. Um, trying to stay there and, and maintain my distance as well. So that's a huge piece of you're allowed to have your family members within the center and you, you just kind of want to keep the flow 
could be something that you take there. Um, talking to parents and teachers a little bit more about the morning. These are a big piece. So a lot, a lot of centers are going to be doing this moving forward for the next little while. And it's those morning questionnaires about where you've been, what you've been up to kind of idea. Have you been well? And looking more into those visual health checks and those temperature checks. I think this is a big thing that across the board is happening. And of course, happening out curbside, you know, it's the end of it. I wouldn't say the end of the world that parents can't come in, but right now it's just what's meant to be. And I think we kind of have to take it more like that school perspective and the idea of, um, at least here for me, you know, parents don't really go into our elementary schools as much and more. And, um, you know, for safety reasons, things like that, doors are locked during the day and similar at centers, um, you know, keep just to keep the flow of traffic down, you know, who's in and out of the place and you know, keep your eye on your front door as well, just for external safety measures. So physical distancing. The biggest one about the classroom, I know, and it goes every against everything when it comes to children being able to socialize. It's actually probably the biggest piece about them being in a center, being in preschool, if maybe they're just attending for those preschool days. But ideally, that that's what they're there for. They're there to socialize. They're there to make friends. They're there to get in an argument with somebody and learn how to deal with it, problem solve, and all of those things. Of, we're all right around being social. but a lot of centers are physically distancing in a way that may not be actually physically distancing, but it is a way that you can help keep spread down as well as it's really there for the tracking purposes. If somebody were to get ill, and, and I hope nobody does in any center, um, but if they do, they can also track from the group, which who it was, notify the proper authorities, things like that. So Limiting this, the amount of children in those classes has been like the biggest thing. And I know that's a big hit to, to centers in, in so many ways. But by keeping those small groups right now and keeping those groups in their own bubbles, you start to become your own family. Um, hit the playground at some you know, staggering times as well. And just trying to keep that mingling down with other groups. And I know that that's probably one of the coolest parts about being in on the playground. Uh, obviously, depending on your size, you can actually you know, have those younger children age appropriately, of course, mixed with some older children and uh, be able to learn a little bit from them. And that's kind of a cool factor about being on the playground. But at the same time right now, just to keep those limits down. Um, we talked about this, parents not being able to ask, you know, stay out of the center for right now. Of course, if there's an emergency, I, I would say pull that parent in at, at the cost that needs to be done. But meal times. this was one of the things that, um, one of our fabulous reps here on our customer support team mentioned she got from a fabulous customer. Uh, Julie was saying that this particular customer shares a cafeteria space in a, in a sort of sense. And so what they've started doing is staggering some meal times this way. The groups are not mingling in this way. They're keeping their bubble and they're all having a good time. In that sense. So just a couple of tips there. The cleaning one, my favorite. My mother would be so, 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 so happy um she's a cleaner she's just a cleaner anyway so ideally here for you guys lots of extra cleaning and it, it's definitely going to become part of your day-to-day -day routine so yes we do cleaning on a day-to-day -day basis um at every center you know it, the floors get cleaned daily you know bathrooms get cleaned daily upping these usage right now you're going to be looking at some more toy cleaning on top of the toy cleaning you're probably doing already but more frequently and more frequently, those um, like well-touched surfaces, which is an entire classroom, it's hard. It's going to be a hard job. I won't lie on that side. And then, of course, just making sure to wash your hands. And I think that whole washing your hand routine is going to turn into part of that slowing the spread as well. And uh, just making sure to incorporate that in your day-to-day -day routine when you're starting to write those up, write those policies up, things like that. So everybody going well so far? I see Raylene, you guys are doing a two to eight mixed race age ratio. Very cool. So many cool things are happening. Set up those children for the biggest success. This is the big part here. So a lot of centers, honestly, it depends on what state you're in, which province you're in when it comes to this PPP things. Many centers are doing a full PPP or at least masks at pickup and drop off um, or the barrier system at that point. Um, but help, help make it a little easier, especially if you haven't quite reopened yet or you're still going through the process, then I would say if anything, to welcome your students back, start, maybe make a video. And the, one of the cool things I actually saw here in Toronto was a center that was doing masks, of course, and they decided to 
take a picture of themselves without the mask. They had it put on a button and then they had that button and they wore that button. So it was a nice big smile. And then this way, the mask covered up their face, helped protect them at that time, helped protect their families, especially at those drop off and pick up times. But just being able to see, see that teacher or that person that you're with all the time and knowing that under that mask is them, it's just like a nice little piece to bring them in. Um, and then one of the other cool things, you know, I would say at the end of the day, of course, if a child is crying, if a child wants a hug, it's going to be at the end of the day, your you and your son's decision to do so. If you, if, um, if, if a child is crying, I first can say hug. That's mm -hmm. my instincts. But if you know, if, welcome, maybe start with a, a dance routine of some kind. This way they feel like they still have that good connection with you. You still have their good connection with them, but at the same time as well, just keeping that low, you know, amount of physical contact down. And then if you need to go further with creating a specific dance, maybe per child, like these are just a couple of great suggestions, guys. So it just depends on where you're going, what you're doing. I see Rita here. Is everyone washing linens every day? So I think that also depends on which state and which um, province you're in. Some are requiring every day. Some are saying once a week, some are sending home to families. It is just really going to depend on your location as well. Maybe too, if everyone has questions about those guys there is, I would say, check with your local health unit as well. You know, see what your caseload is locally and see what they think. And if you guys can do a once a week and they're quite happy with that, then do so, but maybe store appropriately, um, store it separately. So this way, you know, it's not mixing with other children's. Um, I saw there a question about storing cots. I honestly, I think that depends on, on your physical center. We had a closet for the cots. Um, that, that was the only thing that went in them. And then they got a, they got a spray down generally once a week. And then they got, um, they got all their linens washed once a week as well. So that was prior to all this, this craziness. So we have a couple of great questions here. I'm seeing is anyone having children change their shoes upon arrival? I have seen Christine several several centers are doing so some centers have, have had it in policy before to do a, a shoe change up um at in the beginning there so indoor shoes and outdoor shoes i think as well depends on your center probably depends on where you're located um it could have depended on your center policies beforehand so ideally there it's going to probably be down to the center size i know as uh, for me as a teacher i had a shoe policy in place where I had to change my shoes for work shoes when I got to work and but those were the shoes that I left at work so it was a great great way to go ahead so now folks we're going to jump into some great questions coming ahead we're going to jump into our special guest but what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring the lovely Angela on first here because we're just still having some small connection issues with Wanda and I hope we do get to bring her on but Angela if you want to dive on in all the way back from VA guys, welcome back, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you. For Thank those you. who don't know, Angela was back on with us oh, several weeks ago. Huge amount of experience in the classroom for yourself, but maybe just give us like a brief, just because there's some people who probably haven't met you, but a brief overview of you, what happening at Roberta Webb, and then we'll dive into some great questions. Okay. Um brief overview of who I am. Uh, my name is Angela Rouse and I live in Elkton, Virginia. The child care center that I'm the director of is in Harrisonburg, Virginia, which is about 20 minutes south. Um, and we are a nonprofit center that has existed for 25 years. I myself have only been here for the last six months. Um, and I was working um, in some grants for early childhood at James Madison University prior to coming back into the center. But as I'm aging out, I wanted to get back to what I love. And so I'm back at a center and in classrooms and helping out. Um, so that's just a little bit about me and our center. Our capacity here uh, prior to COVID was only 60 children. And um, we are now um, at our capacity, which is 28. Okay. Um, and we, of course, went down because children left, but we also wanted to keep the classroom small so that we could keep everyone uh, six feet apart. And so because of the size of our room, we're limited um, in our three and four-year-old classroom for 10 children in each, and in our two-year-old classroom, eight. Okay. Do you guys have an infant classroom there, Angela? I just can't remember or not. 
We did, um, and it was very small. It was one teacher and four infants. And okay. as soon as COVID hit, licensing closed us down because the square footage was too small. Okay, gotcha, I gotcha. So tell us a little bit, last time you were on, I know when we had talked to you, somebody had tested positive and you guys, had, you were closing for the two weeks. Maybe tell us a little bit about that experience because I know that that's probably the, the biggest fear right now for centers who are reopening. And I think for the most part, you guys have handled it pretty well and pretty, you know, you did everything you needed to do, but tell us about like that experience on your end and bringing everyone back to the center after that. Okay. Um, yeah. So we had um, a father of one of our children test um, positive. And so of course that meant their whole house was on quarantine. Mm -hmm. And because that child was coming every day, um, I can say now that the experience is over, I overreacted and just said, now we all need to be home for, for two weeks. And so I closed the center um, and then I finally got through to the health department um, and they were like, well, now that you've done it, go ahead and, you know, do your stay, but that's not what you need to do. Um, okay. Only if it had been the child to himself that had been in the center that tested positive. So we didn't have to stay closed that long, but we did. Um, and in that time, we just really took some more time to clean and get some other things um, in order. Um, so the child's father um, actually tested positive for almost six weeks. Oh, wow. Um, and so the child stayed out for that length of time. Mm -hmm. um, and then when they came back, everything was fine. Um, and so we haven't really had any cases since. Wonderful. I, I, I'm sorry that you had to go for such a long period of time with it. And of course, you know, being out for that amount of time, I'm sure at a work and, and having his kid at home at the same time probably wasn't the Can easiest. Oh, Wanda, did we get you? I think we finally made it work. Hallelujah. <laughs> wow. Go ahead. This, oh. is a, this has been a challenge for me today. And hey. it was working just fine. That's Let all right. <laughs> Wanda, you settle in. I'll, I'll, what we'll do is we'll, we'll ask some questions here. Evangel, we'll bring you back on in a couple of minutes here. Okay. So this way, not to fret, but everybody, Wanda made it. I'm super excited. So Wanda, just for now, if you wouldn't mind just popping your camera off and turning your okay. mic off this way, and then I'll bring you back on not to fret, okay? Beautiful. I'm so glad. Yeah. Oh, it's always a heart. It's always, you know, something always got to go wrong one day, but it's you just get over it. <laughs> so tell us, you guys got back at it. Were your staff a little nervous about coming back after that parent tested positive or other parents, were they nervous after that? Or was everything okay for you guys? Like what was the fallout of that? Um, so, you know, I think in reality, everybody is a little nervous. Yes. Um, but this was a group of women who decided to stick it out um, and do what we needed to do. So we just do periodic check-ins in the morning. How are you feeling about it? Mm -hmm. um, how are things at home? Um, you know, if you are nervous, what are some things that are making you nervous? Um, so yeah, I, I think that we go through our highs and lows, but nevertheless, employees are still showing up. They're still doing their job to the best of their ability. Um, and we're learning on the fly, which Again, this is all new for everybody. So I'm like, you know, no condemnation, just get in there, ask questions, and we'll get through it day by day. That's so true. We're pioneering. Every single one of them is pioneering yeah. right now. So including you, what was maybe your, like, did you have any big takeaways from reopening like pre, like for the first time and then after your parent tested positive, was there anything that changed drastically or for the most part, did you guys go back to how you were doing things uh, prior to that? Well, I think the number one thing that changed drastically for me was after talking to the health department mm -hmm. and they, they were a calming voice. Like they didn't say anything that made me any more nervous. And they actually said, you guys can just take a breath and it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that really made me feel better. Um, the, lady who answered the phone actually called me back twice. Um, oh. Yeah, just to make sure that if any of my staff had asked me any questions that I couldn't answer, that she'd be more than happy to get those answers to us. So I think that made me just say, okay, 
we can get through this and there are resources out there and people aren't so overwhelmed with it that they won't communicate. Mm -hmm. um, so that made it really nice. Um, my staff, I think they feel a little more um, settled now. Um, you know, every time a child's temperature is a little high, you know, you can just kind of see that somebody might have a little anxiety because that child's in their class. Um, mm -hmm. And I just have to remind them that children are going to get fevers for lots of reasons, not just COVID. So yeah. um, we can just really be calm and still care for that child 100 percent and not be walking around on eggshells. I, I agree. I totally agree about that. It's it's the, the list is probably much longer of what a child will get a fever for versus the COVID. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. so tell us a little bit about like what you guys are doing for house screening and 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 that sort of thing. Are your staff wearing like a pile of PPP PPE? Sorry, or are they just going solo? What what are you guys doing there for like masks or anything like that? So as far as the masks are concerned, we mm -hmm. tried it for about three days, and um, I. I <laughs> I found that our staff um, was getting a little overwhelmed mm -hmm. um, themselves, not feeling, they feel, felt hot and sweaty all the time, um, yeah. felt a little more irritable. And in our two and three year old classroom, um, the children were not playing as much and really reserved, trying to get accustomed to it. Um, so basically I was like, we, it has been the same children and the same teachers. No one knew. Um, we are family now. We have been doing this since, um, let's see, the second time we opened was April 14th. Yep. I'm like, we're good. It's just like being at home. And so let's get rid of the mask and quickly things went back to normal. So, um, our board was okay with it and we just feel that we're doing the best that we can. And we added that that one little extra thing and things kind of really went haywire. So I was like, I, I, no, I'm not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the grocery store and I've had enough and that's like an hour. I can't yeah. imagine chasing a three-year-old and, and yeah. having that. So right. Right. awesome. Well, how about this? I want to share a couple of great pictures. So Angela was amazing. Everybody, these are from her center. Walk us through. I know you guys were doing some pods last time before before you had closed the first time there. Um, walk us through some of these pictures and tell us a little bit more about your setup. I love this picture of your staff member. I really want her shoes. Um, <laughs> I get attracted to colored shoes, guys. Like, don't don't freak out. But tell us about what's going on here and how the kiddos look like. They're having a great time. Okay. Um, so yeah. So we have gone from our staff does not wear any of their regular clothing from home. Okay. Everyone wears scrubs and they are scrubs that we purchased. We bought them three sets each. Um, of course, their wardrobe has grown um, because they are enjoying it. Um, and so we also wear like a scrub jacket like I have on. Um, okay. If a child um, has any body fluids coming out, whether it's tears, snot, just needs to be hugged, held close. We put on a jacket and then we love on them just like we would prior to COVID and um, then we take the jacket off, launder it and, you know, allow the child to continue to play. Mm -hmm. um, so everyone has about five of these each. And um, in the furthest picture to the right, is it the right? No, the left. Um, that's in our two year old classroom. And so that shows two different pods. Um, some of these children that have been here a while and we know mm -hmm. um, we have been allowed to choose what it is that they'd like in their pod. And so okay. um, you see that, you know, Wendy's section there or a little girl, I can't believe I said her name out loud, but anyway, um, she loves to have the kitchen. And uh, so she had her kitchen set and yep. an array of other toys. And then everybody has a shelf with a little bit of everything that they would have been able to gather out of their centers. Um, okay. The other classroom picture is of a four-year-old's pod and they actually have a fam family picture, their name, um, oh. yeah, all kinds of things to write with, their own paints, building materials, and then you'll notice the little carpet square, and that's what they bring to the corner um, if it's going to be a morning meeting or some sort of song or whatever so that they can all be at the corner of their squares to, to hear what's going on or any instruction from their teacher. Gotcha. Um, and then, yeah, so... 
Um, you can see the one picture with the child on the floor. They they just have their own space and, and it really has been nice. Um, in our two-year-old room where we thought we would have a little pushback as far yeah. as being able to stay in their square. Um, I have been saying that I think two-year-olds for a long time have been wanting just this, their own space, their own stuff, and nobody to have to bother them. So they're thinking in their mind, you guys finally got it together. Um, <laughs> and, um, a lot of behavioral needs have gone down because transitions are just so much easier. One, classroom size is smaller. Yes. And um, two, children are feeling a little more freedom of choice and not having to um, use some of those skills that they don't really have a lot of right now. Yeah, that's yeah. true. You can work on those when hopefully when things get back to the uh, regular. But mm -hmm. I, I think I think about my niece and I was telling you about her earlier. She'd probably love this. The her own wall one pod. She's in her room and it's it's all her business and yeah. stay out of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. We'll see what happens when she's 16. So, <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about um, with your parents. Are you guys doing like curbside pickup? Or are you guys doing, uh, are they coming into the center or what are you guys doing for that? Okay, so no, our parents do not come in. Um, so we have two separate carpets that are six foot apart outside. And so they'll pull up mm -hmm. and they stand on a carpet and I walk out, I gather their child. I take their child's temperature. If the temperature is okay, I give the parents a thumbs up and then that parent leaves. One of our floaters comes down the hallway, retrieves the child and takes the child to the bathroom, washes hands, escorts them to their um, classroom. And then we do it all over again. The next parent is then on the carpet waiting. Lovely. Yeah. Guys are nailing it. Do you have any, I wanna bring Wanda on in a couple of minutes here, but do you have any like words of encouragement or advice or maybe even, just something you've learned over the last couple of weeks after reopening that you'd like to share with everybody? Well, I think the biggest lesson learned was, um, you know, bring children back in a small number mm -hmm. so that um, you and your staff can get acclimated to all of the extra cleaning. I think, okay. you know, a lot of times as childcare providers, we feel like, you know, we're on our game. We've been doing this a long time and we really have some great, cleaning skills in process. And we really realized how much we weren't mm -hmm. because now it's on the forefront and that's that number one thing that we are doing. And it is time consuming. If you are doing it the right way, it's going to take a lot of time. So, um, you know, if you can start off with, you know, smaller numbers, then do that so that your staff is not overwhelmed with all the extra things you're asking them to do for the environment and the mm -hmm. children at the same time. Lovely. All right, Miss Angela, hang tight for a few minutes while we bring Wanda on. I'm going to back up, but for Q&A, come on back. We'll have some great questions for you. So I'm going to kick you off and then I'm going to do some backup here, folks, and bring on Miss Wanda. If you'd like to turn on your camera here again and your, your mic and welcome. Well, well hello. I'm, <laughs> I'm just excited to be on. It, it was a trying time there for a moment. It's okay. Perseverance. Like every educator, yeah. perseverance. Yeah. That's, what it <laughs> that's exactly what it takes. Perseverance that's, all the time. That's all good. Wanda, this is your first time on with us. We met you through our yeah. Slack group, but tell us a little bit yeah. about Heart to Heart. Tell us a little bit about you. Take a few minutes and we'll dive into some great questions here. Okay. Well, Heart to Heart has been around since 1969. It started as a small in-home daycare center by my mom, Shirley Buchanan, and uh, we grew and we kept growing. And so we built a larger facility in 1994 and we've been here since then. We also expanded and opened a second facility in 2000. So, so we have been through it all. All, yeah. the, all the changes in Nashville, Tennessee, all the good things, the bad things, but most of all, we've survived because we have a passion for helping families and loving on children and helping them grow and meet their developmental growth so they're ready to go to school. So um, this facility where I'm at now, um, mm -hmm. since COVID, we did have to close one of our facilities and we're okay, okay with that. But we hey, were yeah. okay with that uh, because we knew that it was gonna take a lot to run both facilities and deal with the COVID virus. 
But overall, we at this facility, we have 55 uh, students. Uh, oh. capacity. That's the capacity of the facility. Okay. Uh, and currently, we're serving about 25 wonderful students here. And so, uh, you know, we're saddened that we had to let some of them go. Mm-hmm. But we're, we still stay in contact with the with our uh, with the children. We have currently about three generations that have been through our facilities. Oh, my. Yeah. So hey, we we're back. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so that's and that's a little bit unique. So we have, yeah. you know, children of children of children of children. <laughs> Hey, you wonder what though? Like you said, like mm-hmm. you guys built it up from from like your your mom's home daycare to this. Mm-hmm. Like clearly, your passion is there, and that's clearly driving your business. And of course, the yeah. your, your teachers and that are phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Let's talk a little bit, Wanda. I know you've been chatting a lot about you know using the CDC guidelines, and that's that's really yeah. been where your bread and butter has been over the last couple of weeks as well with the openings and stuff. When when did you guys reopen? And tell us about. Any resources as well besides the CDC guidelines that you use to get everything up and going? Well, we we were open up until April the 15th. Okay. And we were, the state required that we shut down for 14 days. Mm-hmm. And we were like, good, we needed it. I could tell that the teachers were getting a little antsy. They were getting, yeah. you know, a little scared. There was some fear setting in, some anxiety setting in. So I said, okay, let's close for the 14 days. Let's regroup. I'd already reached out to the CDC prior to uh, April, uh, mm-hmm. before April, and received some information on the guidelines. And from my background being a microbiologist, and I already knew that in order to stop something, you have to stop it at the door. You can't let it come in. So, you know, we already, as as well as in early learning, you already know the procedures of cleaning and sanitizing and disinfecting. So we just stepped up that a little bit by looking at the guidelines that the CDC had required us to go by, kind of take took one step at a time. The teachers and I, they, we all got together. We discussed, you know, what their fears were. We discussed what some of the parents' concerns would be, mm-hmm. as well as what they're what they, you know because it's their children. So yeah. we just wanted to make sure that we were meeting the needs of the families when they want to return, as well as the teachers that wanted to return. We maintained all of our staff here, so that was good. So we use the CDC as a as our base. Okay. Then we reached out to our local health department mm-hmm. um, as well. And here at Heart to Heart, we already had an advisory board here on staff, which is made up of parents and outside community resources. Okay. So we reached out to them as well to come together with us as we got ready to reopen. And so we looked at all the demographics and the changes that we would have to make in the environment here, and which was very little. But going forward, we made a lot of small changes, but they were worth the changes that we, that we, we had the time to do that. Yeah. I love mm-hmm. that. I love that putting your your microbiologist hat on, not my mm-hmm. forte, I won't lie. Um, putting that hat on and being able to do that and actually reach into your into your resource pocket and be able to, mm-hmm. I'm hearing the health unit just for anybody else. This seems to be an upcoming theme. If you haven't talked to your health unit, probably mm-hmm. a good idea from both mm-hmm. two people here. Tell us a little bit more about your like health screening procedure, your safety procedures that you guys have put in place. Mm-hmm. Um, and are, are your staff wearing PPE? Um, mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit more about that experience as well. And masks, of course, that's that's always the big question. Yes, I know. The mask is a very big question. Well, <laughs> well, we started, well, like I said, we started first. We started outside the door. Okay. We put a station outside the door. This is when the parents were still able to come into the facility. Okay. And we took temperatures and they cleaned their hands. They washed their hands, everything outside the facility, coming into the facility, then they would wash their hands. Then we changed to a drop-off pickup outside. We did everything outside with the parents. They didn't get out, they don't get out of their car. They pull up, we greet them, we take their temp, we take the children's temp, we document that, they sign off on that. Then they come into the, we bring the children into the building, escort them in, 
wash their hands before they go into their classroom. Then they enter their classroom with that teacher. We have all the teachers are stationary in their classroom. So myself, you know, the director does a lot of things. <laughs> so, you know, we have, we wear a lot of hats. So myself oh. and another teacher who's used to drop off pickup, she's an educator in the public school system. Okay. So she, you know, she had that go with, oh, I know what to do. I know how to get them out of the car. You know, you have to use your teacher's talents the best talent to pick the best part of the program. So she was excellent in doing that. So her and I, when we got together, talked about what we need to do. We had our clipboard, we had our mask on and everything. And so we did a great job, you know, with oh. all of getting the kids in and getting them out of the car safely and getting them in the classroom. Then um, from that point, we installed temperature taking, of course, Instead of just taking it once a day when they get out of the car, we would take it midday and then we would take it upon them getting ready to leave the facility. So we had a, like a, a, a verification checkpoint where we could see all these things. Yes. One thing we also did to enhance the, the cleanliness, the teachers clean throughout mm -hmm. the day, but also we close the facility early, two days out of a week. Like today, we close at one o'clock. Oh. Now, this, this is a cost. And yes. but it's worth it. And I've always learned that if you put your protocols in place and you don't vary from those protocols that you establish, or those guidelines that you establish, then you're going to you're going to continue to have a healthy and safe environment. Mm -hmm. So we have an organization that comes in and they will defog this building, the entire building mm -hmm. twice a week. And it's expensive, but. You've got to do what you got to do to protect yourself as well as the families and to reassure them mm -hmm. that you could be doing those things to protect their children as well as protect the staff that's here and to protect them when they are allowed to come back into the building. For sure. Mm -hmm. And I think as well, a lot of by doing that, you're easing a lot of parents' anxieties as well. And, and your teacher's anxiety levels are probably gone down, too. So there's just so many pros to it in so many different ways so then tell us a little bit what what would be your plan and i i hope this never happens but i hope you guys will this you know you'll work through if you guys ever test positive like a staff member or a teacher uh, sorry a parent or whoever do you guys have a specific plan in place and, and what does that look like for you guys yes the plan in place we had to establish a place in our facility where there was ventilation and where that someone could remove the child and get the child into that space. And then a notification would be sent out. So we have, you know, like show and I'm like show and tell as well. We have our <laughs> every teacher has this PPP e equipment yep. where they have their gowns, they have a face shield and they have a mask in yep. their classroom. And if any child exemplifies oh. those type of that kind of symptom, then they will dress themselves, bring the child to the space that we have. Mm -hmm. Then I put on my PPE gown, mask, and shield, and I will wait until that parent arrives to the facility to pick up the child. Mm -hmm. We then notify all the parents that these are the symptoms that we have no that we know. The yeah. child then goes, the parent is told to take the child to their primary care facility position mm -hmm. and have that child checked and have that child checked out. Yes. So then after that, then after that, then we do the notification that is sent to the parents as well. And then the parents, what they'll do is they will contact us and we will let them know that what the, what the outcome was of that child. It could be a cold, but we don't know nowadays. So, you know, yeah. it's kind of hard now because of these symptoms, we have to take every symptom as though it may be a COVID symptom. Yeah. That they child may have the COVID virus. So it, we're better safe than sorry. Then we actually clean that classroom. The entire building gets cleaned again. And then we reopen back up. All right. Mm -hmm. Quick question for you. Going back to you guys closing early. Um, mm -hmm. it, Gina has been asking, did you get any pushbacks from your parents about closing early two days a week or were they more than happy to allow that to happen? Our parents were more than happy right. to allow that. One thing I think that, that allowed the parents to buy into 
this new norm mm -hmm. was that we had a meeting prior to us reopening back up. And I wow. guess we dispelled all the myths, we dispelled all the fear, and we reassured them that we're here to make sure that while you are an essential worker or you have to work, we're going to be here to take care of your child. It's just like our typical day-to-day -day routine prior to COVID. We're here to care for your child, to keep your child safe, to keep your child healthy, and to make sure your, your child has a great learning experience while they're here. Wanda, I think you nailed it in every <laughs> shape and form there. Hey, before we jump into open Q&A, do you have any words of encouragement or advice that you want to pass on to everybody listening? I know everyone's all ears because there's like nobody on the chat box. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I would just like to let everybody know that from, from being in this business for a very long time is that we have to take one day at a time. Don't try to be overwhelmed. This can overwhelm you, mm. but you have to maintain your health. You have to make sure you take care of yourself going forward. Make sure you let the parents know that their children need to be taken care of. They need to be have they need to have proper sleep. They need to have healthy meals. They need to have a clean environment on both sides of the table. Yeah. Uh, you know, work together to make your environment the best place for your child to grow. So we want to make sure that that's what we're doing here and going forward as teachers. Take care of yourself. Be positive. Read mm. positive material because this can really depress you, in a, so to speak. You know, if you say, oh, my goodness, I didn't want that child to get COVID while they were coming here in the environment. So, you know, you can go through a depressing state. So just want to make sure that, you know, make your environment the best place for the child to grow and develop as we go through this COVID time and continue to do that with a positive attitude. And uh, about the mask, I know about the mask. We made these shirts. I don't, I don't know if you can see it. Hold it up but, a little higher, Wanda. Oh my you, goodness! Stop. So this is the shirt, and we we're using this as a fundraiser. And the no. parent, gets, yes, the parent gets a shirt, and they get a mask. And these masks have like the cars on it. They have Mickey Mouse on them. So we asked the pre-K students, "What is one of your favorite characters?" that yep. you would like to see on a mask. So when we put these shirts on, we wear them every day. So we put, we have a set of them for each teacher and they're different colors. So we said, we'll use it as a fundraiser to go toward our PPE materials yes. and that we need to have. So the parents were excited about it. That's fantastic. And I, I want to let you guys know that we do everything through Hi Mama all the communication, all of our notices. We use Hi Mama as our platform and it is a great tool. It, I, she said it guys, not me. <laughs> Thank you, it my is. dear. Thank mm -hmm. you. I know that you. We, we hear ranting and raving from the customer support team. So I want to bring on Angela, get a couple of Q and A's in with you guys. So okay. Angela, if you want to come on back and then we're going to dive in here with Carmen. So I actually have, um, I have a couple of great questions. Um, I'm going to start here with you, actually, Angela, because I think this one is a little bit more on, on your side. This is from Laura, and she wanted to know where you guys got your scrubs and your jackets. Okay. Oh, Angela, did we um, lose you? Um, can you hear me? I can hear you. We just can't see you. Okay. You've disappeared. Okay. <laughs> um, all good. There she is. There she is. Um, so we went to our local Roses, which is right around the corner. You know, I, I think we probably spent fifty dollars on each on each employee, but it was well worth it. I love it. I love it. I might have to uh, might have to get myself some scrubs, guys. Now they look comfy, and I like your shirt yeah. idea. All right, well, I have a great question here for you um, because you you coming from like a, a, a fairly large having the two facilities. Uh, Shirley's asking. She's saying that her facility is two hundred or more students and with at least 20 students in a classroom, do you have any suggestions on how to like separate them about how to like maybe move them around? I know coming from that big center, that's not really easy dividing up those kids in those spaces, but. Well, one thing about the facility, you have to take a look at your classroom size. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, the CDC stated that they would like for us to try to do 10 or less in a group setting. 
And in this facility, as well as our other facility, we had seven or eight classrooms. So what we did was the children, we we used every classroom and we okay. moved everything out of the classroom. And then we made actual bins for the children. So, mm -hmm. for example, the pre-K classroom, they have it's just like Miss Angela did. They have individual learning centers where okay. they can choose to go and get their learning centers. And then, of course, they have little notes for the teachers to kind of keep them on track as mm -hmm. to the things that they're going to be learning during the 10 L's. If, if they're doing the standards, of course, they have little key notes. And mm -hmm. I have an example of one. So let me show it to you right quick. I love visual learning. You okay, ladies nailed it. Now, I'm holding it up. This, and so oh. with the facility, we took these little bins. Let's see if I can see. Yep. And this is our listening and talking. And inside. Now, each child has one. And then inside the bins, you can see, we have little telephones, a little book, a little, and it's all for that child. Yeah. Little different things. And this is also can be used in your two-year-old classroom mm -hmm. as well. So they go over and they'll get these bins and then the teacher will sit down and it has like listening and talking, language development, small group, teacher director, or it can be done individually if it's a three-year-old. So this kind of helps your teacher stay focused too as what they're wanting to teach the children and what they need to learn while they're using this. And of course, a lot of language development. Then I have one that shows the manipulative area because you know they love to go in the manipulative area yep. and it has sequencing in here little bees everything's been put in plastic and then it has a little game of course with the numbers on it as well and then they can use this and they can set the table or the teacher can actually set six feet apart mm -hmm. and for a distance and she can encourage the child ask those pertinent questions of how they how they're learning their math concepts so with her having that large of a space in the classroom then you yeah. you have to foster or design your space so that the children can be in a space where it's comfortable for them and also be able to use the tools that they have in that classroom so what we did was we just took and said okay we're going to have 50 kids here today we have eight classrooms we're going to, so that means, hey, we can have seven children in a classroom approximately. And yeah. we did that. And so we, and the same thing in our other facility, in our 55 facility, we did the exact same thing. We had four, we have four classrooms and we divide. We got 25 kids. So we said we got six kids plus one in one extra classroom. So we're able to do that. Yes. Now, financially, from a financial background, that it, that's something that you really have to, be careful with, of course, um, yeah. you know, but the state of Tennessee, I, I really appreciated our state because not only did the they had we had a essential worker funding program here with no income eligibility. OK, So those parents that were working essential workers, that the income threshold would allow them not to be funded they were able to be funded. So that helped our business tremendously. Mm -hmm. Very good. I'm, I mm -hmm. kind of feel like one, did you like, did you two have like a conversation before this? And because your centers are like not similar, but not, I'm jo it's joking, I'm joking. I'm going to do this one last question. I'm going to aim it at you, Angela, but if Wanda, if you want to jump in after, I'd be more than happy. This is a good question, especially with two year olds and them learning to, to socialize and about how crucial that is. So this is from Haley. And our question is, how will toddlers learn the crucial social skills if they cannot interact with one another and practice sharing and taking turns? I know that, you, Angela, you were saying about how a lot of behaviors went went downhill, which was great because, you know, maybe a little less crying in the toddler room, but it doesn't matter. No matter when, they're always crying. Um, but ideally, like, what, what ways maybe would you be fostering some of those skills in a time when, of course, sharing shouldn't really be happening right now? Well, I think a lot more of it is happening with the teacher and the child versus the child mm -hmm. and the child. So there, it's being modeled by the adult in the room. Um, but when our two-year-olds go outside, they have their own fence area. Um, and so a lot of that is happening in that space. Um, gotcha. Did not separate their square footage outside into six foot 
areas for them to be alone. And so outside in the fresh air, they are able to talk and laugh and play ring around the rosies and do all of the things they need to do together. And now that it's summer, a lot more time is being spent outside yeah. together. Yeah. Heck yeah, I'd love to be, I'd love to do this on the balcony, but I'm pretty sure my boss would be like, okay, no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> Wanda, do you want to add anything to that here um, about you guys and what you guys are doing at your facility for that? Well, I know that social development is, a, is key and toddlers, they are learning how to share and how to get along with one another. So I, we, what we did, we reflected back on how we do infants when they, when it's time for them to learn how to parallel play and you yeah. put them beside each other. We actually spaced out six feet out on our play yard. And what we did, we set up, we were a little bit proactive setting up different centers on the play yard. And yeah. so the children could come, but we make sure that they don't necessarily, when the six feet outside space, the air is moving. So they're not breathing and they're not yep. contacting right on each other, mm -hmm. on top of each other. When they're inside the environment, that's when the, that's when the transmission, yes. if we're not wearing masks, is more dangerous, we would say. So oh, yeah. we, we make sure that they are back to back, but they still can be near each other. Right. The, the smaller age group. The, the older ones, when they're outside, they can move around freely. We position ourselves so we can encourage them to be near each other mm -hmm. without them being on top of each other. Mm -hmm. That's the main, that's the, the, the concern, I think, overall, is them being on top of each other. You know how they like to get together and they're right, oh, you know, yeah. show the length. So it's just that you just have to rearrange your space to allow that six foot distance to occur but they don't really know it's occurring, but you know it's occurring. Right. You kind of guide them through their day when they're when they're doing their open center time playing or when they're actually sitting on the carpet reading books. Like I know one person used carpet squares and just set them six foot at distance, but make sure that they were facing each other so they could look up and speak to each other instead of mm -hmm. being far apart from each other and not you way over this side of the classroom and I can't even see you. You know, so just make it just kind of be a little bit proactive and kind of situate, position them so that they can see each other still and they still can communicate. That's very true. Ladies, both of you ladies, it yes. has been so wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wanda, having you on for the first time. Angela, having oh. you back. It has been an absolute joy and pleasure. I always feel so rev like revived after listening to you ladies and what you guys are going through and what's happening. And I hope everybody enjoys it. I'm going to do a couple of shout outs and then we're going to bring on the lovely Carmen here. Okay. Wrap up a couple of things here. A couple of shout outs about some shoe tips. These are coming from the audience. So uh, one of the ladies here says you can spray the bottom of your shoes with some bleach and water solution, of, you know, measure out obviously, but when disinfecting, if you don't want to do maybe the, the shoe changeover. Mm -hmm. And Debbie was saying the disposable shoe covers work well for her in her classroom. Mm -hmm. I would see a dance party happening with those bad boys, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to hand it off here to the lovely Carmen before we say goodbye, just mm -hmm. to fill in a couple of the, the key features here. Okay. okay. Awesome. So guys, I'm going to talk about the certificates really quickly. I have just shared it with you in the file section on um, the right hand side there. So click on it. It's a PDF. You can download it and then fill out your name and your center information. We will also be emailing this out to you um, from Webinar Jam right after this. And as usual, the show notes and the recording will be going out to you guys tomorrow. I try to get them out to you before lunch. And next week, we'll be meeting here, same place, same time, and we'll be talking about parent engagement when reopening. So that's a session that's going to be led by Ria. And we're really excited to see all of you guys back on here. And I'll be sending out a survey. So if you guys have five minutes, um, give us your feedback. We want to hear what topics you would like to um, like us to cover, as well as you know what information that you're looking for. And Wanda and Angela have been absolute rock stars today. Thanks so much for sharing your tips, your tricks, and for the service that you're providing to the community. It's been awesome having you guys on here. And we'll 
will be going over to the ECE Slack group. So you can join us for about 10 to 15 minutes where we will answer any questions one-on-one. -on -one. I'll be posting the invitation link in the chat shortly, and hopefully we will see some of you guys there. Thank you once again, Angela and Wanda. Phenomenal to have you on. It was, it's an absolute joy and pleasure from everyone here at Hi Mama. Thank you for spending the time with us. And for everyone here in the audience, thank you for spending your time with us. Stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Awesome. See you guys. And you can Hi click everyone. on the link in the chat there and join us on Slack. And thanks so much, Wanda. Yes, thanks thank so you, Wanda. Wanda. And Angela, That's, thank you. You guys are phenomenal. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care, all. All right.